All right. I really have it. <laughs> Honey, Thank you. I know you think I'm wrong about Chip, but my instinct is working overtime where Polly is concerned. You uh, think things are getting serious between them? Well, have you seen the locket he bought her? No, but it uh, can't be much. Your Chip can't charge things, and I happen to know he only has $30 to his name. Well, then she now owns a $30 locket. No. Oh. Well, she will own a $30 locket when he gives it to her tonight. Well, Barbara, suppose he did decide to do something weird like going steady. I can't see that as too much of a problem, can you? Suppose he decides to do something weirder, like getting married. <laughs> oh, I'm sure marriage has never entered Chip's mind. So am I. But I'm not so sure it hasn't entered Polly's mind. Oh. For me? Sure, it's for you. It's not even my birthday till tomorrow. Oh, Chip! A locket! Yeah. Oh, it's beautiful. Now look inside. I didn't know whether to put the picture in upside down or right side up. What? Well, you know, when it's around your neck, and for some reason you want to look at the picture, it won't be upside down. Why don't you put it on so I can see what you mean? Here. Boy, they sure make these things little. Does this little hook roll around inside the little ring? So you pull this back, and then you hook it like that. Oh. Anyway, if you had it on, you want to look at the picture. You do this. And there is, if you could get it open. Man. I'm glad you're not good at putting on girls' lockets. It says something to me. It says I got clumsy fingers. Uh, it says you don't give girls lockets. Oh, Chip. Is it upside down? Aren't you going to kiss me? Sure. Happy birthday. Mm. Now I have that comfortable feeling again. Yeah, good, because you're sitting on a busted spring. The external world doesn't mean anything to me. It's being with you. It's knowing that you took the trouble to pick out and buy me a locket. And put your picture in it. Even to try to figure out whether the picture would be right side up when I looked at it. Those are good things, Chip. Really good. Well, that's cool. Do you have that comfortable feeling when you're with me, too? Well, sure. Like you don't want to be with anybody else? Right. Like with all the millions of people in the world, they're just the two of us? Yeah, something like that. Chip, let's make it come true. Make what come true? That out of all the millions of people in the world, they're just the two of us. Okay. You mean it? Well, sure. I guess that's why I bought you the lock. Oh, Jim. The weather report says fair and warmer. Oh, great. There goes my golf game. But he says there's not going to be any rain for the weekend. He said fair and warmer during the last monsoon. <laughs> Hi, you guys. Hi, Jibber. Hey, how did Polly like the locket? It blew her mind. <laughs> well, in that case, I'm glad you didn't give her a diamond necklace. <laughs> well, me too. Oh, by the way, Polly and I are going steady. Well. That again, dear. You and Chip are what? Engaged. Engaged. He gave me this locket and he put his picture in it. And we talked about how there was no one in the world but us. But did he actually propose? Of course, in an ethereal sense. Chip doesn't talk much, but his innuendos are overwhelming. 
But there was no date mentioned. Of course not, Mother. You don't say, Paul, here's a locket with my picture in it. Let's get married June 27th. Oh, I see. No, you don't see. You have that this will all blow over look on your face. It won't. All right, dear. But in the meantime, we, uh, we won't say anything to your father about this, will we? Oh, of course not. I mean, Pop isn't ready for a thing like this. A lunch? What do you want to have lunch with a couple of women for? They invited him. Polly's mother wants to get to know him better. Yeah, well, I don't like the sound of that. She's okay. Keep your eyes wide open. There's something weird about getting invited to lunch by a couple of dames. Uh, I mean, ladies. Now, uh, you got a clean shirt? Sure, this one. Yeah, well, that shirt was clean when Hector was a pup. I'll get you another one. Who's Hector? Oh, it's just one of those wild sayings from the olden days. I think I'm broken. <sighs> broken? Yeah. Everybody's saying things, and I don't know what they're saying. <laughs> you're not broken, Dodie. You're just young. Boy, that's a relief. I wouldn't want you guys to have a busted little sister. <laughs> what are you looking for? Oh, the ketchup. Hey, excuse me. Ketchup puts ketchup on everything. Oh, getting to know each other's habit patterns, hmm? I guess so. Well, that's nice. For the future. Um... Pauline tells me you and she have an arrangement. Mama means about, you know, what we talked about last night. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> I mean, from now on, there's just going to be the two of us. Oh, that's fine, Chip. Uh, now, we haven't said anything to Pauline's father about this yet. It sounds funny to hear you call Pauline. Oh, why haven't you told him? It's no big deal. It's no big deal? Well, I mean, why didn't you tell him? Well, you see, Chip, uh, I wanted to know a little more about your plans and hopes for the future before we bothered Mr. Williams with any formal announcement. It's just that Daddy gets so excited about everything. How come? I don't know. I guess because I'm his only daughter and anything... anything like what we talked about last night would stir him up. Oh, he's got a mental hang-up or something? Oh, no, Chip. Oh, oh, my goodness. Hey, there's your dad. Want me to go tell him we're here? No! no. That's all right, Chip. He, uh, he sees us. I'm a reasonable man, wouldn't you say, Margaret? Wouldn't you say that, Margaret? Yes, dear. You're a very reasonable man. Then why won't you answer a simple question? Because I have been answering all afternoon and all through dinner. Polly and I had lunch with Chip this afternoon because it was her birthday. And it was a little celebration. In that case, why don't you look at me when you say it? Oh, Tom, I'm tired of the whole subject. I'm going to bed. You're not going to tell me what it is, huh? I told you. Margaret, a woman does not go to lunch with her daughter and her daughter's boyfriend unless something's going on. Now, I want to know what it is. Tom, Pauline was 18 today. I know. I gave her a present. Fine. Now you can give her another present. What? Leave her alone. <laughs> How's this? Yeah, fine, Rob. Did you play golf this weekend, eh? Yeah, in spite of the weather, Bureau. It's been pretty rough on them. 
Two or three times last year, they were right. <laughs> What's the matter? Molly's father. You better put a smile on. Your face is saying, I don't like this guy. <laughs> Lucky I spotted you, Steve. Hello, Mr. Williams. Uh, it's my son, Rob. You must be the one with the triplets, right? Right. Nice to know you. Uh, Steve, uh, could, we, could we talk alone? Well, is it something that couldn't be said in front of Rob? No, I, I guess not. Uh, Steve, we, we have a big problem on our hands. Oh? Yes, uh, Polly and Richard. What about uh, Polly and Chip, Mr. Williams? Tom, you, you keep forgetting to call me Tom. What about Polly and Chip, uh, Tom? Steve, I, uh, I caught them having lunch together. You uh, caught them having lunch together? With my wife. And you came over here to tell me about it? Why would two kids have lunch with an adult? I mean, kids think all adults are creeps, right? But not necessarily. Well, what I'm, what I'm trying to say is that they have been seeing a lot of each other. You know, and you have to admit they have been seeing a lot of each other. Well, suddenly they decide to have lunch with my wife. This can only mean one thing. They're serious about each other. Well, either that or they like your wife. But Tom, I think they are serious about each other. But what's wrong with that? Steve, do you want Richard married at 18? Just what are you trying to say? I'm trying to say that I think that your son and my daughter are engaged. Engaged? Do you mind if your father and I discuss this alone? What do you say, Steve? I spoke with Chip a couple of nights ago about this whole thing. Now, he's very fond of Polly, but they are not engaged. Well, look, would, would you talk to him again? Uh, pin him down. Get, get back to me. I mean, you've got to see my side of this. Until Friday, she was only 17. Uh, look, I, I'm sorry it was rough on you, boy, but you, you did butt in a lot, and this is important to me. Let me know what you find out, Steve. He really turns me off. That makes two of us. I think there might be something to what he's thinking. Chip tells me they're just going steady. I trust Chip. You trust me about what? Oh, hi, Chip. On your way to see Polly? Oh, yeah. We both have 10 o'clock classes tomorrow, so we just thought we'd mess around. You trust me about what? Oh, we were just talking about you and Polly going steady. Oh, she's okay. Chip, uh, that's all it is, isn't it? I mean, uh, you're just going steady. You mean, are we engaged or something? Well, the thought crossed our minds. Oh, come on, Dad. Do you think I'm weird or something? <laughs> Night. Night. Headache better? Yeah. It's a miracle cure. You better move over here next to me. Do you really want me to? Well, sure. That spring will kill you. That better? Yeah. I'm sorry about the radio being busted. Who needs a radio? It's a warm night, the trees are whispering, and the crickets are singing. That's music enough for me. Crickets don't sing. I know, but listen for a minute. Isn't it pretty? Well, you get a good sound for a bunch of bugs rubbing their hind legs together. <laughs> Is that all it means to you? A bunch of bugs rubbing their hind legs together? Well, heck no. It's pretty. But when you think about it, most sounds come out of a throat. The human mind isn't quite ready for any sound that's made any other way. Oh, Chip, you're deep. <laughs> well, there's nothing deep about it. It's just stuff you notice. You're modest, too. Are you sorry about the other night when you gave me the locket? Well, why should I be sorry? It's paid for. I don't mean that. I mean about us being engaged. Engaged? Engaged? <laughs> yeah. Man, Dad, we must have got our wires crossed. I never said the word engaged to Polly, honest. Well, honey, it's not a crime, even if you did. Yeah, but man, where do I go from here? 
No, I didn't even know we were going steady. And now I find out I'm engaged. Well, Chip, uh, has there been any talk of a wedding date or a ring or anything? Of course not. Did she maneuver me or something? Chip, I've watched Polly around you. She's in love. Deeply in love. Now, she didn't maneuver you, but she may have indulged in a little uh, wishful thinking. Yeah, but man, I'm still engaged. Oh, Chip, it's just a word. I mean, engaged or going steady, it's, uh, it's sort of the same thing. One has a little more potential than the other, that's all. Hey, yeah. Well, nobody can marry me if I don't want to get married. Would you guys think I'm a wimp if I let Polly go on thinking we're engaged? Uh, a wimp? Spineless? Well, Chip, you've never been a wimp. You never will be. Polly's not the only one who loves you, honey. I know. Good night. Good night, Chip. Good night. You know... Don't say it. I know. You're frowning because Mr. Williams turned out to be right. Well, he wasn't right when I talked to him. He only became right tonight. Honey. A man just called and said he was coming right over. Did he uh, say what his name was? Yeah, Mr. Williams. Who else? <laughs> oh, thanks, I'll need it. <laughs> That's all I ask, darling. Don't let whatever he has to say upset you. I don't intend to. Good. I mean, I'm only saying this because I know you don't care for him. I'm not going to lose my temper if that's what you're worried about. Yes, well, that is what I'm worried about. I, oh, I, I, I'll get it. Hello, Barbara. Hi, Steve. Well, I was right. You were wrong. Uh, won't you come in? Thank you. I made some coffee. Uh, sit down, Steve. Sit down. Uh, I, uh, I knew something was going on. You see, the women around my house get a wild look when they're trying to keep something from me. But I wore them down. You found out that Chip and Polly are engaged. You, you know? Chip told us last night. We were a little surprised, too. As a matter of fact, Chip was surprised. He thought they were just going steady. You're not trying to lay the blame off on Polly, Steve. I think it's ridiculous to blame either one of them. Agreed. Agreed? Yes, agreed, of course. I suggest you have a nice long talk with your boy and tell him to stop bothering Polly. Well, let me put it a different way. Just tell him that there are a lot of other fish in the ocean and I think he should start fishing again. <laughs> what I'm really trying to suggest is that we break this whole thing off right now. That way nobody gets hurt. Nobody gets hurt. Well, what about those two kids? I'm her father. Well, what kind of a father is it that tries to kill his daughter's happiness? Take it easy. I mean, how do you know that, that those kids are, are just deeply in love? Why don't you give them a chance? A chance to find out for themselves. <laughs> what kind of a law says a father should skulk around the background and let's just call the whole thing off right now? Oh, Mr. Williams. Mr. Williams, you make me ill. <laughs> Is she always like that? No. Y do you agree with her? I not only agree with her, I'm proud of her. <laughs> Morning, Uncle Charlie. Morning. That was a nice going over you gave that fat head last night. Did you hear it? Every word. Well, I'm not very proud of myself. Hey, that was a neat blush to gave old Williams last night, Mom. You shot him down real good. Well, I'm not very proud of losing control like that. Hey, Mom, thanks. For what? For blasting Polly's dad and defending me and all that stuff. It left your mother a little shaken, but uh, 
I must say I was very proud of her, too. But did everybody hear it? Mm -hmm. Sure. You could hardly miss. I'll bet they heard you in Albuquerque. <laughs> What's everybody talking about? Oh, nothing, honey. Your mother sounded like a fishwife last night, and she's sorry. Man, I'm busted again. You're busted? Yeah. Even when people explain junk to me, I never know what's going on. <laughs> well, Dodie, uh, first chance we get, we'll have you repaired. <laughs> Don't put the eggs on the bottom. Chip! Hey, man! Hi, you guys. How long have you been working here? Oh, a few days. Yeah, well, how come? What's wrong with working? You guys better move on. She gets hacked real easy. <laughs> no kidding, Uncle Charlie. I need this job. Oh, that's great. Good job. <laughs> Here, daughter, you take it. So uh, much. Bye. Honey, don't you think I ought to send this to the cleaner? It's all wrinkled. Okay, uh, just have them sponge and press it, huh? Sponge and press? That went out with the streetcar. <laughs> hey, by the way, did you talk to Chip tonight? No, I, uh, I didn't get a chance. I guess he went over to Polly's. Uh, why? Well, he's uh, a box boy at the supermarket. So he's going to school all day and working, huh? Uh, he still is going to school. Oh, yes. I, I did get that much out of him. <laughs> Just said he needed more money. Probably needs a new carburetor or something for his car. Mm. Or else. Aren't you going to ask me, or else what? No. Uh, smart man. I'm not so sure I have an or else. <laughs> Hey, Margaret, something's wrong. Tom, will you please lower your voice? They can hear you in there. And what could possibly be wrong? All that studying is not healthy. <laughs> oh, they're quitting the studying. Did you mind going down the malt shop and get a root beer or something? Oh, you're going to get a root beer, eh? Yeah, Mr. Williams. You can only study for so long, and then your head gets kind of mushy. Yeah, well, we don't want any mushy heads. <laughs> You'll be home in an hour. I want you home by 11. Tom, she's in college. Oh, right? Richard doesn't want her to get sick from lack of sleep, do you, Richard? Uh, no, sir. I'll get her home early. Margaret, I can't stand watching that boy put his hands on her. Oh, Tom, they were only holding hands. You think they're going for a root beer, Margaret? Is that what you really think? Yes. Mrs. Douglas, I'm sorry to bother you, but may I talk to you? Yes, of course. Come on in. Uh, first of all, I... Uh, I want you to know, I think Chip's the finest boy I've ever met. Well, thank you. And I find myself in the peculiar position of defending my own husband. You see, Tom dotes on Polly to the point where nobody is good enough for her. He just refuses to accept the fact that she's a young lady and not a baby. What's happened, Mrs. Williams? Well... This morning, I was cleaning out Polly's dresser, and I'm not so sure that Tom's suspicions weren't correct. Bank book. 
joint account. Apparently, Chip and Polly opened that three weeks ago. Both names. Both names, Mrs. Douglas. Are you saying they're married? I don't know. What do you think? Well, I think we ought to ask the children. I mean, they are sort of engaged. Looks like they're saving up for the day that they finally do get married. Looks like it might be some time. They only have $90. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I was building up to an absolute panic, but just talking to you has set the whole thing back in place. Thank you. I'm sure it's what you say it is. They're just saving up for the day when they do get married. Mrs. Williams? Yes. Would it be so terrible if they were married? Oh, not for me. As I told you, I love Chip. But uh, if Mr. Williams finds out about this bank book, I'm just not sure what his reaction will be. He mustn't find out. Not yet, anyway. Thank you. Richard? What are you doing here? I work here, Mr. Lance. Why didn't anybody say anything? I don't know. I didn't tell my parents either. You didn't? Why not? I don't know. I just figured I could use a little extra money. Why, why do you suddenly need a little extra money, Richard? Oh, I guess I'm beginning to feel more responsible for stuff. Uh, I think the line's being held up, Mr. Williams. You feel responsible. Responsible for what, Richard? Uh, can we talk about it later? Well, that's an excellent idea, Richard. I think we'd better talk about it later. But why should it bother you, Chip? I don't know. Uh, Mr. Williams tried to make it seem like some sort of a, a crime that I was working at the market. But why are you working, Chip? I mean, you've got a pretty heavy workload at school. Well, sure, but well, Polly and I opened up this bank account so we could save up in case we decide to get married someday. Uh, uh, a joint account? Yeah. I give her the money and she puts it in the bank. <laughs> Why should Mr. Williams get so hacked just because I'm working? Because he wouldn't be going to school and working and hanging around here both day and night if there wasn't a reason. But, Tom, maybe he's just an industrious boy. Industrious? My aunt's bustle. Now, what's going on, honey? You can tell your dad. Nothing is going on, Papa. Now, you, you two kids wouldn't be saving for something wild like getting married, would you? Well, would that be so awful? Romeo and Juliet were 15 when they got married. They didn't get married. Oh, yes, they did. They were married secretly by that, that priest, that friar, what's his name? What did Shakespeare know about Polly and Richard? He knew enough about fathers to know they try to break marriages up. Pauline! She only means... Mama, please. Face it, Papa, I'm a woman. And I want to marry Chip. All my life, you've never trusted me, and I've had to sneak behind your back. Now I've got something to show you. Margaret, follow her. She must have a fever. She doesn't have a fever. She means every word she's saying. And if you ask me, it's just about time. Chip and I opened this about three weeks ago. A uh, joint account? I'll get the back door. Good night, folks. Good night, Good night Charlie. Hmm, a little early for the milkman, ain't it? Hello, Mr. Douglas. I've left home. Downstairs. Huh? Man, Dad, what's she down there for? She uh, brought a suitcase. It seems she's left home. She wants to talk to you. Ernie, where are you going? Well, down to help Chip. 
There's nothing handier than a sibling when you're in trouble. Would you get back to Bethany, please? Okay. But he's blowing a chance for some pretty expert brotherly consultation. You take that chance, Ernie. Good night. Did I do a stupid thing, Mrs. Douglas? You're not a stupid girl, honey. So I'm sure you realize you're going to have to face your parents sooner or later. Polly? Oh, Chip! Hey, man, Polly. I had this terrible fight with my father, and I didn't know what to do. I came here. I, uh, I think maybe Chip and Polly would like to talk this situation over by themselves. Why? Steve's right. It's a problem they have to work out alone. Oh, now, wait a minute. Before everybody gets noble, maybe the kids need some advice. I don't think so, Charlie. If they're old enough to talk about an engagement, they're old enough to handle this. Yeah, but where are they going to talk? If they're in the kitchen, I can hear them in my room. And they can't go up to Chip's room because old big-eared Ernie is up there. <laughs> Charlie, if we left here, they'd be alone, wouldn't they? Good night. <laughs> Good night. If, uh, if you kids want us for anything, we'll be upstairs. Okay, now tell me what happened. Ernie. Oh, but uh, I, I was just coming down for some water, Dad. Did the uh, faucets in the bathroom dry up? Oh, yeah. I forgot about those. Back to bed. <laughs> Well, for two people who are practically tongue-tied, they're certainly talking a long time. Yeah. What do you think? I just, uh, I'm surprised that Williams hasn't shown up. Hmm. And he probably will, and there'll be quite a scene. After we had this terrible fight, I went to my room, and I got to thinking about us. So I packed and climbed out the window and came right over. Oh, Chip, let's elope this minute. Hello? Man, Polly, I couldn't do that to my family. Don't you love me? Well, sure. My dad would never understand it if I just upped and eloped. Chip Douglas, when a woman says, don't you love me to a man, he doesn't just say sure. He tells her how much he loves her and he'd do anything for her. Polly, are you sure you don't want to elope just to get back at your dad? How can you say such a thing? Well, for one thing, you just had a fight, and then you show up here with a suitcase. That's because I thought my fiancé was the only one I could trust. Well, yeah, but you got to see your dad's side of it. He hates to lose his only daughter. Well, so he hangs on a little too tight, maybe. Chip, I just don't believe this. Yeah. Listen to loping on $90 a little dumb. It's not dumb. It's romantic. And a man who really loves a woman doesn't count money. We sure haven't got much money to count. <laughs> Why don't you just write it on a wall somewhere, Chip? Like what on a wall? Chip Douglas hates Polly Williams. Hey, wait a minute. Where are you going? What do you care? Man, Polly, I do care. Man, Polly, why don't you quit saying man and act like one? Chip Douglas, I never want to see you again. was a door slam. Goldie, uh, hurry, get back to bed now. Was that a stomach bloom, Daddy? <laughs> no, Dodie, I don't. Well, good night, you guys. Hurry. Now, no talking, no probing, no questions, no anything. Do we understand each other? Man, Dad, I'm not going to find out what happened. Oh, look, I'll tell you what happened. Chip and, and Polly had the wildest beef you ever heard. First she said... Good night, Charlie. What do you mean, good night, Charlie? I'm trying to tell you something. Good night, Charlie. Good night, Charlie. That's all I get around here is good night, Charlie. Good night, Charlie. Is that a sonic bloom? No. Good night, Dodie. Come on, Dodie. Back to bed. You don't have to worry about me talking or anything, Daddy, because I never know what's going on around here anyway. Well, 
it seems Chip and Polly had a big argument. Anne. And she uh, went out and slammed the door. And? And uh, that's all I know, honey. Good night. Well, what was the argument about? Why did she leave home? Now, Steve and Douglas, don't pretend you're asleep. You're just as curious about Chip and Polly as I am. Concerned, honey. Not curious. Good night. Well. Polly? Polly, honey. Polly. Come in. Uh, Polly, uh, we just can't go to sleep without uh, settling this thing, without straightening things out. I, you, uh, you yell at me. I'm, I'm willing to forget it. Papa, you can stop talking. Now, you hold on, young lady. I hate Chip Douglas. You do? I never want to see him again. You don't? <laughs> that, well, that's a nice, that's a nice, sensible girl. Uh, well, get some sleep. Good night, honey. <laughs> I heard you get out of bed. Uh, Margaret, you uh, you tell me that uh, I have a big mouth, right? And uh, you tell me I don't understand my daughter, right? Well, I must be doing something right, because my daughter just told me that she hates Chip Douglas and she never wants to see him again. Oh, I don't believe... No. Check it out in the morning. She wants to get some sleep. You see, Margaret, I don't uh, talk to Polly just to hear myself talk. You see, I put in psychology. I, I try to pick the correct phrase. <laughs> Bob and I had a terrible fight when we were going together. As a matter of fact, it was a week before the wedding. Oh, no kidding? Really? How come Polly yelled at me like that? I imagine that she yelled because you didn't react the way she pictured. She must have thought the romance of the thing would sweep you right off your feet. Instead, you pointed out that you only had $90 in the bank. You were being practical. She had stars in her eyes. Yeah, how could she want to marry me one minute and holler at me the next? Well, she's in love, Chip. Well, uh, how would you like to go to Rome? Hi, honey. Well, what should I do, Katie? Go pick her up at school. Tell her you love her. Tell her to cool the elopement for a while. Say silly things, romantic things. Tell her some jokes. Just don't let her get away. I can catch her right after late chem lab. Thanks, Kitty. Oh, hi, Rob. <laughs> poor Chip. And never mind about poor Chip. Didn't you hear what I just said? Did you say something about Rome? I didn't say Glendale. Rome? Rome! <laughs> Where will you stay, Rob? Well, the Italian affiliate is making all the arrangements. All we have to do is show up on that empty plane. <laughs> empty plane? Yeah, Rob says it's a terrible waste, but all they want is the plane over there, not the passengers. Well, why don't you come along, Uncle Charlie? It'd be a little difficult, but I think we can spare you around here for a few days. Uh, no. Barging in ain't one of my specialties. No. Uncle Charlie, there's no barging into it. We'll all fly over there together. I'll be busy at the Italian plant. You can look up your friend, and then we fly home together. Oh, do it, Uncle Charlie. Come on, Uncle Charlie. Sure, go ahead. Listen, why not? Good. 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 Good.
Oh, hello. Hi, Steve. Uh, I, I'd like to have a little talk with you. It might be the last one we ever need to have. Oh, uh, well, then uh, come right in, Mr. Uh, uh, Tom. Um, Steve, do you, you think we could talk privately? Uh, sorry, Dad. We were just on our way anyway. Oh. Uncle Charlie, don't you back out of that Rome trip. Uh, I'm going to put you on the manifest for Monday morning. Goodbye. Bye, Goodbye, Kenny. Bye. Rob? How private is this talk, or shall I cool it someplace else? No, 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 this is, a, this is a family thing, so you just stay put if you like. I had a little talk with Pauline last night, in which I pointed out the nonsense attached to getting married at such a young age. And the upshot was this. She doesn't want to see Chip anymore. But uh, Chip uh, may not accept this. I know I wouldn't have at his age. But boys are pursuers. Uh, therefore, I'm going to ask you a cooperation. You know, just, uh, just uh, have him stay away for a, for a period of time. Uh, just a minute, uh, Tom. Chip, would you come in here, please? <laughs> Hello, Papa. Chip and I are doing homework. What, what, what happened to last night, Pauline? Oh, well, that was just a lover's quarrel. If you want me to get Polly home early, uh, we'd better get back to work, Mr. Williams, okay? <laughs> Would you like a cup of coffee, Mr. Williams? Very, very strong. <laughs> I'll make it. If I'm going to Italy, I'd better get used to making espresso. Nothing stronger than that. Call your father, darling. Who? Your mother. Sure. My mother calls my father Tom, and he calls her Margaret. Well, aren't those their names? Sure, but it sounds like they're using numbers. <laughs> well, Dodie's asleep. Bernie's pretending to do homework, and all is right with the world. Good. Where'd you say you were going? Down the store to get some tobacco. Why don't you come along? Oh, I thought you'd never ask. Kids, we'll be back. We're going to go out for a few minutes. See you later. Okay. Did they ever fight? I guess. That's a relief. You should hear it around my house. Well, they don't actually fight. They just disagree once in a while. Then they fight. No. It just gets a little quiet around here, that's all. Oh, my dad usually goes for a walk. When he comes back, they fight? No. When he comes back, they laugh about it and say how dumb the whole thing was. Now, tomorrow, my mom's even going to have lunch with him. Where he works? Well, sure. She goes there all the time. My father says that a woman who shows up where a man works is violating the male ethic. What does that mean? I don't know. My mother never violates it. <laughs> I'm not sure I'm entitled to eat at this table, Mr. Anderson. Robbie, you have an office and a secretary and a key to the washroom. You are therefore, by all rules of appearances, an executive. Thanks. You know, you brighten up the place, Barbara. You should join us more often. Well, you keep saying things like that, and I will. <laughs> My wife says, what's the use of being the wife of a vice president if you have to carry a tray? It's a bourgeois attitude, but that's Sylvia. Oh, by the way, I was supposed to ask you something. Yeah, what are you wearing tomorrow night? Uh, tomorrow night? Uh, Mrs. Anderson's costume party. Oh. Katie and I thought we'd go as Antony and Cleopatra. Fine. About half the people I've invited are coming as Antony and Cleopatra. And three of the Cleopatras weigh 200 pounds each. <laughs> Steve, what are you wearing? Uh, well, I'll tell you. Uh... I, I thought I'd go by that costume place in Hollywood on the way home. Good. Sylvie wants to balance it out. You know, last year we had 15 Groucho Marxes and 10 Julius Caesars. <laughs> and one executive that didn't show up at all. I had the virus. Well, Sylvia's expecting you this year.
And if you don't show up this time, we're going to send a doctor for you. <laughs> Hmm? Well, what is it, honey? I can't believe it. What? Well, Dodie just woke your father up, and all he said was, what is it, honey? Mommy's getting dressed in her costume thing. Oh, is it that late? I think so. I can't think of anything more appropriate to say than meow. <laughs> you look mighty cute. Thank you. <laughs> now, here's yours. You don't mean I have to wear something like that. Oh, honey, it was the simplest costume I could find. And you know it was practically a command that we come in costumes. Go on. Try it on. Go on. Hey, man, Daddy. Where? Nothing personal, Steve. But you look like the world's biggest rat. But I still have to paint the whiskers on. Now, whiskers? Here is the rest of it. I, I, uh... I think we should have talked this over first. I don't know, though, honey. We'd better try it on. I'm afraid I might have to make some alterations. But I still think we should have talked this whole thing over. I know. I... Take it for me, Steve. You've looked much better in your day. Charlie, uh, come on, honey. Look at yourself in the mirror. You're going to like it. And besides, uh, Bobby and Dave, you're going to come pretty soon. Could you have gotten a Sir Callahan thing or something? He doesn't really want to do it, does he? Who? Your father. He really doesn't want to put on that costume. I guess not. Uh, dad hates to look dumb. Not my dad. If there's a costume party, he always shows up as Cupid or something, wears a tablecloth for a diaper. Are you up to page 160 yet? Sale on cat costumes. Well, Bob and I tried to figure out which costumes would be the least objectionable to our husband. Well, we could have come disguised as two businessmen. Hi, Polly. Hi. Don't you want to go either, Robbie? Not as a cat. But the men in this family always were pushovers. The folks ready? Hey, you guys, they're here. And hey, where's the party? In Bel Air. <laughs> well, here come the cats. <laughs> yeah, here are those crazy Douglases all dressed up for a big night out on the town. I should have gotten Steve's costume two sizes larger. I, I let it out as much as I could. <laughs> they don't make them any larger. <laughs> Dad, you look great. Yeah, well, that I look better than I feel. The thing chokes me every time I sit down. Uh, honey, would you take my wallet and my keys? Or... Guess you noticed they didn't put any pockets in these outfits. I noticed, but too late. Uh, now, now, let's get started, you two, before you figure out some reason to stay home. Okay. Your car, mine, Rob. Yeah, I guess yours, Dad. It's bigger, and we've got four sets of tails to wrestle with. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now, you be good for Chip, Polly, and Uncle Charlie, because they're the bosses. Okay. What are you going as? A litter? <laughs> Come on, baby doll. I made you a batch of cookies that'll give you cavities for a month. Hey, me! <laughs> Bye. See, see you all later. <laughs> yeah. Don't watch it. Have a good time. Yeah. Goodbye, Chip. Well, we better hit the books. Hey, what's wrong? Nothing. I'm well, sure there is. What is it? There's so much fun and love in this house. I want to be part of it. You are. I am? Well, sure. You can come over and visit and do homework anytime you want. That's not what I mean. Hey, wow, Polly. <laughs> oh, Barbara, I gave you my wallet and the keys, huh? Yes. Well, I better have the keys. <laughs> Yes. 
But if I come home now, Daddy, I'll never get the assignment done. Tell him it's due Monday. What? Yeah, he said that he heard that and for you to quit prompting me. <laughs> but it really is due Monday. I'm going to have to work all day tomorrow, too. Chip will bring me home. I don't know, as soon as we finish the assignment. I'm listening. Come on, give me that phone. Come on. Hello, Williams. This is Chip's uncle. Now, come on, let's get this thing straight. These kids ain't faking their thing. They're really doing their homework. Chip, tell him not to talk to Daddy like that. He hates people to call him Williams. Uncle Charlie. Now, look, don't get salty with me. <laughs> I'll tell you the way we work. See? We let these kids finish their homework, and then I'll bring her home personally. I don't care if it's 2 o'clock in the morning. Now nah, you're talking sense. I'll see you later, Williams. <laughs> Come on, you kids, get to work. Go on. Thank you, Uncle Charlie. <laughs> Mrs. Katz and the kittens. In case you were wondering, I'm Julius Caesar, and people keep stabbing me with ketchup. Come on in. Thank you. Come on in. Come in, Steve. That's got to be Daddy. Hello? Oh, Williams, don't you ever get tired of calling. Yeah, I know it's 12.30. Well, look, tomorrow, Sunday, she can sleep late, so keep your shirt on. Maybe I'd better go. No, no, stay there. I said I'd bring her home, didn't I? So go watch a late movie or something. <laughs> right. See you later, Williams. <laughs> now, you kids cut out the kissing and hit them books. Thanks, Uncle Charlie. <laughs> yeah, thanks. I think I'll flake out in my room. You call me when you finish with your homework. Did you notice we were the first to leave? Oh, we usually are. Well, we ate three hours ago. The conversation was getting a little stale, and matter of fact, so was the air. Did you ever see anything wilder looking than the president of a huge company running around as a green Martian? Well, it's all over. Right, it's over. We've done our duty, and it's over. Flattered? Well, of course. My husband always says wonderful things like that when he takes me out. <laughs> Wait, 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 don't shut the door, my tail's out there. Hi, you guys. Dodie, what are you doing up? I can't sleep. My head won't start sleeping unless it hears a story first. Okay. Once upon a time, there was this giant. Was he medium big or real big? He was real big. He was so tall that it looked like he was always wearing a white hat. That was the clouds, right? Right. And because his head was always up in the clouds, his hair got all wet and his skull got real soggy. Yuck. <laughs> and none of the giant girls would look at it. Because who wants to look at a giant with wet hair and a soggy skull, right? Right. So a genie told him to sit down. Right. And he sat down. And that brought his head out of the clouds. And it dried out. And his skull wasn't soggy anymore. And he combed his hair, and all of a sudden... You forgot the low. <laughs> he combed his hair, and lo, all of a sudden he was real good looking. And he asked this real gasser of a giant girl to marry him. She said yes. And they lived happily ever after. Now say good night. Good night. Did you make that story up? Well, I try and change it once in a while. But she likes the way I told it to her the first time. Do you tell her stories often? Well, we all do. You should hear some of the ones Uncle Charlie tells her. Chip. Yeah? You're really something else. Got a guess? Yeah, it looks that way, Ron. I thought we had enough of... Barbara, did you use the car this afternoon? Oh, honey, I'm so sorry. I went downtown twice for the costume. The second time because I thought maybe yours was too small and I... I just forgot all about the gas. Well, it's my fault. I should have checked before we started out tonight. I wonder where the nearest gas station is. The only one I can think of is in Brentwood. 
Yeah. Dad, turn on the ignition for a second. Yeah. No, I don't think that needle is quite on empty. Oh, but it's awfully close to empty. Might be something wrong with the carburetor or something. I don't think so, Bob. I think it's out of gas. Have you got any tools in the back? Yeah, there's some tools back there, but you're wasting your time. It's out of gas. It sure is a deserted street. I know. It's it's kind of spooky. It's so quiet. Oh, Katie, don't start that, please. Well, I'll get the tools. Maybe there's something I can do. Okay, but... Uh, it's out of gas. <laughs> something tells me it's going to be a long time before we hear the end of this. Well, I wouldn't blame them. Out there in the dark in two cat costumes because some dumb woman forgot to check the gas. <laughs> I'd better get some gas. Dad, why don't you stick around and see if I can get this thing running? Rob, I know this car is out of gas, but you go ahead and see if you can fix it. In the meantime, I'm going to get some gas. Like that? What do you mean? Oh, you mean dress like this? Well, I haven't got much choice, have I? I'm going to get some gas. Well, uh, just stay on this street till you get the sunset, Dad. I'll pick you up if I get it started. You won't get it started. Baby. Oh, Steve. All he needs now is for a big dog to chase him up a tree. Oh, I'm, uh, I'm sorry to bother you. I ran out of gas. <laughs> fuel line. Oh. Maybe we can catch Dad before he gets too far. Ah, oh, don't wipe your filthy hands on that costume. Here, use this. Hello. Uh, before you get worried or anything, let me explain. Uh, I look like this because I've been to a costume party. And I, I've run out of gas, so I wonder if I could use your foot. <laughs> You must be the cat burglar. <laughs> cat burglar? Well, people panic a little when they answer the door at one in the morning and six-foot cat is standing there. <laughs> Obviously, you've been to a costume party. <laughs> yes, that's right. I was, I was Mr. Uh, Robert Anderson's up the canyon there. Right. Do you have some identification, please? I'm sorry, officer. I, uh, I don't. Uh, you see, this outfit doesn't have any pockets in it, and... Uh... You mean you're not uh, wearing trousers uh, under there? Well, it was so tight I couldn't get trousers under it. Officer, uh, my name is Stephen Douglas. Uh, I work with Mr. Anderson. Uh, you see, my car ran out of gas. And you were trying to reach the auto club by phone. That's right. Fine. Uh, let's go find your car and verify the facts, and we'll see about getting his, that gas. Oh, that's that's fine. Uh, uh, where do you want? Right here. Oh, good. Yeah. This isn't going to be easy, you know, with this tail. No. <laughs> well, say, officer, I've been trying to get this hood off, and the zipper back here seems to be stuck. Could you help me with it? Uh, after we get in the car, sir. Oh, fine. <laughs> Here it is, under ecology. See, I told you. Chip, did your father come home? No, should he have? Oh. Yeah. I don't know how we could have missed him. We've been up and down that street ten times. What happened? Well, we, we ran out of gas, and it's too complicated to explain, but I think we ought to go back to Bel Air. Uh, Barb, I've lived through enough of these to know that if both parties keep moving, you never meet. I think we better stay right here and wait for him. Oh, I keep thinking of him walking up that canyon with the gal on the gas and his, his tail bouncing. <laughs> yeah, Barb, he'll be just fine. I'm sorry we have to put you through this, but if somebody doesn't identify you pretty soon, we'll have to run you down to the station. Uh, uh, Bob. Mr. Anderson? Julius Caesar, at your service. Uh, uh, Bob, would you identify me for these officers, please? I never saw this cat in my life. <laughs> oh, come on, Bob. Are you Mr. Anderson, sir? Yes. And this is Steve Douglas, one of the best engineers we have. Bob, could I use your phone, please? Uh, I'm a little worried about Barb and the others. Sure, come on in, Steve. And don't worry, officers, we'll get him home. Oh, by the way, we're missing one Cleopatra and one Green Martian. We'll keep an eye out for them, sir. Uh, officers, thanks very much for being so sensible about the uh, whole silly thing. Thank you. 
Frankly, uh, it's made a whole evening. You know where the phone is, Dave? Yes. Right over there. Well, finished at last. Oh, not me. I still have half a page to go. I'm gonna get us something cool, Mom. Can I get you anything? Oh, not now, honey. You ought to quit worrying about Dad. He called, so he's fine. Well, he didn't sound too fine on the phone. He sounded angry. Is he really angry? Oh, I think so. I don't blame him. And neither do I. He must have looked pretty dumb walking all over Bel Air in that outfit. Barbara, where's the soap? Uh, what soap, darling? The soap that takes these whiskers off. Oh, it's upstairs. <laughs> Did uh, Robbie and Katie go home? Right after you called. What'd they do, go home in their underwear? Uh, well, no, Robbie uh, had some trousers under his costume and I loaned Katie a robe. How do you... What's the hurry about taking your whiskers off? I mean, you're home now. Well, I, I'd kind of like to hear what happened. Barbara, I'm going upstairs and I'm going to take this thing off. And then I'm going to take the whiskers off. And then I'm going to get some other clothes on. And then I'm going to take a walk. A long walk. <laughs> Chip, you stay here with Polly, and I'll get us something to drink. That's it? Well, that's what? I know your father must have been furious. Is that all he's going to say about it? Sure, I told you. The walk is to cool him off. That way, nobody yells. Chip. Yeah? I absolutely, positively have to get into this family. Okay. Time's up. I'm taking you home whether you're finished with that junk or not. Hey, come on, Uncle Charlie. Look, I'm going to start the car and you be there in a minute or there's going to be trouble. I'm sorry, Polly. It's okay, darling. That I'm used to. Hey, you called me darling.